Oh, okay, well, back again, everybody. This will be day two of the list. The list. Okay, I think we went through all of our Echo budget in the last episode, which is unfortunate because there's like 11 more of these. But, um, Barry, my trusted keeper of the list, are you ready to continue? Let me just double check the list really quick that's on the back of Barry. Uh, and I don't have to do all of these in order, alright? You can do the list however you want to do the list, okay? It's up to your own, um, you know, interpretation. Okay, you know what? That's a good one. Let's do this one. Alright, so today's video, we're gonna be talking about Smoker, currently a Vice Admiral, currently on his way to go see Vegapunk with Tashigi. Um, actually, we don't even really know if he already did that, because, you know, that happened a long time ago, right after Punk Hazard. Um, they got all the children that Caesar was experimenting on, and him and Tashigi were like, okay, we're gonna take him to Vegapunk's lab, because if there's anybody in the world that might be able to reverse the gigantification experiments that Caesar was performing on these little kids, then it would probably be him. But, you know, that was a while back. I mean, then, you know, a lot of stuff happened since then. You know, Dressrosa, and then Zoe, Totland, and now here in Wano. Um, you know, since Punk Hazard, I like to think it's probably been at least a few months since then, right? You know, Reverie happened in the intermediate time. So they might have already have arrived at Vegapunk's lab, dropped off the kids, and left. Or they could still be there. You know, it's like Smoker and Tashigi landed, and like, hey, we have these kids from Punk Hazard that we're being experimented on, and Vegapunk comes out, and we have no no idea what he's like yet and he's like oh okay well let's I'll, I'll run some tests and see if we can figure out a cure or whatever and Smoker and Tashigi might have just decided to stay. So today's video, we're going to be talking about Smoker's future role in the story. I've definitely talked about this before, mentioning that I would like to see Smoker in a position of supreme authority by the end of the story. Like, I could see, uh, you know, in an epilogue of One Piece, like, let's say the actual story in, like the, like, the timeline we're in right now, this ends. You know, the Straw Hats find the One Piece and everything, and then there's, like, an epilogue to One Piece. Kind of like how there was an epilogue to Bleach that cut to, like, ten years later. I could see that here, maybe 10, maybe even 20 years in the future, and we see kind of where everybody's at at this point with, like, Luffy being in, like, his 40s or something like that. That would actually be kind of cool to have a few chapters to kind of, like, play out the story, right? Um, and by the way, actually, there's another another one on this list that's um, uh, talking about the recent interview that uh, One Piece has, I think, four to five years left was what we said this time, so we'll, we'll find out where we're at with that um, in a future video. But, I would like to see Smoker either as an Admiral or even maybe even the Fleet Admiral by the end of the story. Uh, looking around in the situation we have in the world right now with the world government ruling everything, the Tenryu Bito, obviously that system is going to crumble by the end of the story. I mean, that's kind of one of the main points of the story. That is the main point of the Revolutionary Army led by Dragon. He's like, I'm going to dissolve the Tenryu Bito system, going to crush that into powder, and then we're going to leave the world government as the infrastructure, but we're going to make major overhauls to this, okay? And we're gonna just, you know, ma make sure everything is kind of more fair and just, <laughs> you know, more than just, like, bo bowing to the Celestial Dragons as if they're gods on Earth, you know? We're gonna, we're gonna work on that bit a, a, a touch. Um, so after all that is said and done, the Marines are definitely going to be reworked. The, the Marines are corrupted as well. Uh, not as much as the world government, obviously. There are some Marines that, you know, are definitely dedicated to the cause, like Smoker. Uh, but there's also a lot of Marines that just obey the world government, or the laws of the world without question. You know, just basically like, all pirates are evil, therefore all pirates must be, you know, you know, walk the plank or be executed. And Smoker was like that at first as well, uh, because, you know, being stationed at Logtown back when he was a captain, pretty much all the pirates that came to his island, you know, to Logtown to gain access to the Grand Line, um, they were definitely the kind of, like, you know, plundering kind of pirates. But then Alabasta happened, and then he got saved by Luffy, and then he got to witness, you know, the way that the Straw Hats act at Punk Hazard, and, you know, taking care of the kids and everything. And I think Smoker's definitely someone that's, like, his sense of justice is definitely skewed maybe a slight bit from the more absolute justice that he kind of had during Logtown, and now it's gearing more toward, like, the more moral justice, more of Aokiji's type of justice. Not saying that even back then, Smoker was, like, a, as absolute justice as, like, Aka Inu is, because Aka Inu is, like, you know, pull that dial all the way to the end there. Um, you know, we saw what happened at Ohara. Although, it's even possible that Aka Inu might at some point, I mean, I think he's starting to realize right now, being the Fleet Admiral, being in the position of authority that he is, he's supposed to be the grand ruler of the Marines, but he's still vastly limited on what he can and cannot do 
by the powers that be, by the Gorosei, by the world government, by the Tenryubito. And I think Akainu is really, really starting to see the corruption that exists in this system. And even he, by the end of this story, I mean, it's been a while since we've seen Akainu. We've seen him, um, you know, we saw him at headquarters a few times just chilling out. There was that one time where Sengoku was walking by eating some rice crackers and he's like, hey, how do you like the job there, buddy? And he's just like, shut up, go away, you're retired. I'm like, ah, okay, um, yeah, I will go away. I'm gonna go down to my nice little villa on the side of the bay and have a nice relaxing nap while you're up here doing paperwork and managing the entire marine fleet. Yeah, it's not as fun as it sounded, right? It's like, yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, even Akainu might change in some way, but definitely, Smoker was more like that during Logtown. Um, Smoker also, of course, has a Logia. He was the first Logia revealed in the story, and we saw all the admirals when they were revealed at Marineford, when all the admirals were revealed in, in full scope there. Uh, what do they all have? They all have Logias, right? So, I think it would make sense if Smoker became an admiral at some point, you know, further down the line. He's already a vice admiral, so he's, he's, on paper, he's really close to that. On paper, he's right below the rank of Admiral, because that's Vice Admiral. But I think making the jump from Vice Admiral to Admiral, that that takes a lot of work. You gotta put in a lot of uh, effort to get to that e extra promotion. It was enough work already just going from Captain to Commodore to Vice Admiral just in the span of two years. So that shows promise. But if you look at all the Admirals that we had, um, obviously Akainu got promoted, but Fujitora, Kizaru, Aokiji, who is no longer an Admiral, Green Bull as well, they're all around like their 50s. I think they're all at least 50 years old. Although we don't know um, Green Bull's official age yet. Maybe he might be a little bit bit younger, I'm not really sure, but they're all around late 40s, early 50s kind of the deal. So, you know, Smoker's only 36 right now, so it might be just a situation of, like, um, you need experience, you know, we're not gonna promote you to Admiral at age 36, that's just not how it's done in the Marines, you have to, at least, you know, you've done a lot of really great stuff, Smoker, you're commanding a fleet, and work, you've done great work at G5 and everything, and promote your Vice Admiral, um, but there's a bunch of Vice Admirals. In order to make that next jump to one of the three positions of Admiral, a few things probably have to be, you know, uh, you know, done beforehand. Number one, there has to be an opening. Right now, there is currently not. You know, Fujitora, Green Bull, and Kizaru are the current admirals. Akinu is the fleet admiral. And um, so whenever there is an opening, whatever happens, whenever one of the admirals decides to step down, or if there's a promotion, or a demotion, I guess. I guess one of the admirals could have always been demoted if, if the fleet admiral deems it, you know, like, oh, you've, you've done some messed up. Now they go, Kizaru, we're tired of you getting high on the job, all right? We're demoting you to Vice Admiral. He would just be like, okay, Akainu, I guess so. <laughs> and I don't think he would really care all that much, but I guess that could happen. Or they could, there could be a death, or there could be a defection, you know, like Aokiji left, or there's somebody else could die. Um, some people even decide to turn it down. I think even, well, that's the thing, Garp, okay, Garp is a little bit of an exception to this rule. I think Garp was, well, I think even back then when Garp was being offered the position of Admiral, that was only 20-something years ago. Garp is in his 70s right now, so he would have, he would have probably been in his early 50s back when he was offered the promotion to Vice Admiral, and, um, you know, he decided, I mean, from Vice Admiral to Admiral, and he decided to turn it down, because he's like, ah, I don't want anything like that, right? So, we're, of course, talking way down the line here, of course. Now, you also have Kobe. Kobe and Smoker both have, like, a good connection to Luffy. You know, Smoker kind of being, like, kind of, sort of, like, like Garp was to Roger, not exactly the same paradigm there. I know there's a lot of people that are looking at that as like, yeah, they're not really the same thing. And it doesn't have to be the same thing, right? It's just the same thing like a lot of people saying that like, oh yeah, Luffy has to follow in Roger's footsteps, so everything that Roger did, Luffy has to do as well. No, 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 that is definitely not how this has to go. Um, a big theme of One Piece is the inherited will, sure, and Luffy definitely carries on Roger's will. I'm sure Smoker carries on a little bit of Garp's will as well. Um, you know, but at the same t time, they're different people, right? So it's like Luffy doesn't have to do everything. There might even be a pivotal moment in, like, later on when we get to One Piece or the Ra or Laugh Tale or whatever, where Roger did something and Luffy decides to do it the exact opposite way that Roger did. Maybe without even knowing it. So let let's just keep in mind with that there. But then you have Smoker and Luffy, but you also have Kobe and Luffy. And, you know, that's like the first person that Luffy really befriended on his journey. And his journey is kind of parallel with Luffy. Luffy wants to be, you know, Kaizuku Oni Orewanar, King of the Pirates, and um, Kobe wants to be King of the Marines, or Admiral of the Marines, at least Admiral of the Marines there. Um, 
once again, just a situation with experience and all that. Um, if we are going to do, like, the epilogue kind of deal, and we cut to, like, 20 years in the future, so Kobe would be, like, 38, Smoker would be, like, 56, Luffy would be, uh, like, 49 or something like that. He'd be, like, 39, 40 years old, something like that. Um, if we're gonna do that, I don't think Kobe would have the position of Admiral or anything higher than that at that point. Uh, Kobe right now is a, um, captain, which is pretty high rank considering how, you know, he just started two years ago. He literally went from chore boy to, uh, captain, so you still got a lot of ranks there to work up, Kobe, and I think it's gonna be a lot, like, harder of a steep of a climb. Um, so yeah, I, I, maybe even further down the line, though, even more than just 20 years, let's cut to 40 years down the line. 40 years down the line, where Smoker's in his 70s, and then Kobe's in his 50s, then I could see Kobe finally becoming the fleet admiral of the Marines. That would be something really cool to see, right? Um, but anyway, beyond just the rank that, you know, Smoker may or may not attain later on, what is his overall role going to be in this story? Um, right, because he's not really prevalent right now. I mean, we'll cut back to him every now and then. He's like, oh, this is what Smoker and Toshigi are doing. But what's actually going to go down here? Well... I don't really necessarily think that Smoker was a member of S.W.O.R.D. Uh, at the very beginning, or he was even a member during Punk Hazard, but I do think that with the way things are tilting right now in the story, I definitely think Smoker would have would have uh, been approached to become a member of this organization. Um, you know, I think maybe they were like a little bit hesitant about recruiting him, because he is, he is a good Marine, and we saw that during uh, Logtown, you know, with the little girl with the ice cream cone and everything, you know, so he's, he's not correct. Corrupted. He's not going to take the kickback money or anything like that. He does his job as a Marine. He was just more skewed, uh, you know, the absolute justice thing. But now that he's, I think his position has kind of softened a bit since then. And that's because of Luffy. That's also because maybe working at G5 a little bit and seeing the world a little bit more, just general experience. And after the whole ordeal at, um, uh, uh, Alabasta, where, where, you know, the, uh, government changed the story completely around, so it's like, oh, no, yeah, the Straw Hats defeated Crocodile, no, it, it was you, Smoker, you're, you're gonna take the promotion, you're gonna like it, you know, after seeing all that and the corruption there, I think Smoker, he's definitely more, I think, open to the world being more corrupted than he originally felt, and more of like, well, I am a Marine, we're supposed to be ostensibly the good guys, but uh, it's not looking like that right now. So I've always been under the impression that Sengoku and Garp are the like top echelon of S.W.O.R.D. All right, yeah, we saw Drake, he was like the captain of S.W.O.R.D., but I think there was like a supreme commander of S.W.O.R.D., and it's this isolated little group, you know, best of the best, or people they can trust. Maybe not necessarily like best of the best in terms of like the absolute strongest in the Marines, but they're the people they can trust the most. All right, and so Kobe is definitely there, because uh, he was, you know, Kobe and Helmeppo, because they trained under Garp, so that makes sense. But then you have Smoker and Tashigi, and I think if they're definitely going to increase numbers of S.W.O.R.D., if they need more people to help them out, and Aokiji was also good friends with Smoker, maybe Aokiji was also, you know, he's a member of S.W.O.R.D. as well, I would assume, because, you know, he's infiltrating Blackbeard's crew. I think the whole thing with him working for Blackbeard, that's all, like, undercover operation shit. I'd have no, I have really no thought whatsoever that um, Aokiji really just decided to go evil and work for a Yonko. That doesn't really make much sense to me. I'm still under the impression the whole battle that Akainu and Aokiji had, like, it was a legitimate battle, it was a serious brawl, but at the end of it, they kind of decided, like, all right, the loser has to defect, and if you defect, if you go, then maybe, you know, you can seep into the Yonko, because it can make it look like you were kicked out of the Marines, or you defected. And there's even a thought out there, there's even a theory, and I mentioned this in a video before, what if Aokiji actually won the fight between the two, but they decided that it would probably be best for Akainu to be the fleet admiral, and then I go and then do the undercover thing, because I think Aokiji would be better at the undercover thing than Akainu would be, you know what I mean? So there's still, that's up in the air too. But let's say Aokiji is a member of S.W.O.R.D., not confirmed, but let's just assume. And he's a friend with Smoker, so maybe he'd be kind of like watching and observing Smoker for the last few years, and just be like, you know what, I think this is a candidate for S.W.O.R.D., 
but I just want to wait a little while longer to see how he really develops as a Marine. He might go down more of the absolute justice path, or if he skews a little bit more to moral justice, or maybe his own d type of justice, because all these different Marines, like Kizaru's is unclear justice, for instance. There's all these different kinds of justice out there. Even Aokiji wasn't always, um, well, his is not really so much moral. His is lazy justice. But even with Aokiji, it used to be blazing justice or burning justice. Maybe Aokiji saw a little bit of him in Smoker, and he's like, Let let's see where he goes from here. But now where we're at right now, after Punk Hazard, I think Smoker and Tashigi would both kind of get that invitation. I could see them going to, you know, Vegapunk's lab, dropping off the kids and everything. And Vegapunk also, I mean, he, who knows, maybe... You know what, now that I actually think about it, considering we have all this stuff going on right now, and it looks like Vegapunk might very well be working for the Revolutionary Army, because that's been hinted at quite a bit, and then we have this S.W.O.R.D. organization, what if S.W.O.R.D. and the Revolutionary Army kind of are maybe not like super close allies but they're kind of like working together not to say that like kobe and drake are secretly revolutionaries but like sword is more like like because the rest of the marines and the world government views the revolutionaries as the enemy like if you see a revolutionary the uh orders from the world government from up above or like eliminate them capture them execute them because they are trying to take down the world government and the tenry Bito. they're the enemy but what if sword is a little bit more like okay well you guys are corrupted as shit, so I can see what the revolutionaries are doing. We're not, we're not like working with them in that capacity, but we're also not really their enemies either. It might be something like that. But let's say after the events of Punk Hazard, Aokiji shows up or somebody else shows up and extends the invitation to Smoker and Tashigi. They, they bring them into the back room. And they're like, because like Tashigi basically has to come along. It's the same thing with Helmeppo. It's not confirmed Helmeppo is a member of S.W.O.R.D., but if Garp might, it, well, we don't know Garp either, but if Kobe is, then probably Helmeppo is as well, because they're like working together. It's it's hard to keep a secret, right? So, and, and Tashigi's fine, and Tashigi can join as well, right? Um, you know, so let's say they take him into the back room and they're like, all right, here's the deal. You know, <laughs> lights up a cigarette. You want a light? And Smoker's like, nah, I'm good. He just billows out, like, I, I'm all, I always have a light. It's like, all right, cool. Anyway, um, so it turns out there's this secret operative, you know, uh, agency in the Marines called S.W.O.R.D., and we don't take orders from the Fleet Admiral or the World Government or the Tenryu Bito or anything like that. Uh, we're here to infiltrate Yonko crews, and we're here to take care of corruption, essentially. Um, you know, we're kind of like an internal police sort of, um, and it's like, oh, okay. And it'd be like, we, we've been watching you for a while, Smoker. I think, I think you'd be a good fit for this organization. And um, Smoker, I mean, they might leave it up to him. They might lead it up to like, okay, you have an option. You can either join us or you could go back to just your regular Marine duties. Um, you know, keep in mind, you can't tell anybody about this place because I think they would have been chosen for trust. So it's like, you know, we know that even if you say no to our offer, you're probably not going to go and blab about it to the rest of the Marines so we know we can trust you. And especially if he got, like, a recommendation from Aokiji or somebody. So, I think Smoker, though, would probably accept, and Tashigi, would, therefore, would also would accept, and they would become a member of S.W.O.R.D. And then they would start working together with the other members there, and that take it away from there right like at some point like they're going to be the new generation that's going to kind of carry the marines into this new era okay after everything is said and done let's say the tenryu Bito system is demolished a lot of the corrupt marines are out of the picture the world government is kind of husk at this point that's really what it is it's the structure is there and maybe if you handle this a certain way, the rest of the world, the civilians of the world might not know that, like, all of their leaders are dead. But, you know, they, they can still make it work. And maybe the revolutionaries might even help out for a little bit there. Like, they might have a council or something. But at the end of the day, I don't think Dragon wants to rule over the world. I think he's like, I'll, I'll help, like, the transitionary period here. Um, but it's going to be Marines like, you know, like the members of S.W.O.R.D. Like, so Drake and Kobe, Smoker, Tashigi... Actually, okay, I I think Drake's going to die in this arc. I know that kind of came out of nowhere, but, you know, considering where we're at right now, it, it, I think it's very, very likely Drake might die trying to take down Kaido. Like, his plan might succeed. I'm sure Drake has a plan, and he's going to double-cross the Toby Ropo at some point. Like, he might, he's going to take a lot of people down with him, but I think Drake might very well die. I'm not, I'm not... I'm kind of seeing death flags for Drake, kind of. But 
Kobe is definitely going to live on. You know, Smoker and Tashigi are still going to be around. Um, and then, you know, I, I, I can see Aokiji and Garp and Sengoku looking to their generation, people like Smoker and Kobe, and more people just like them. I mean, there, there's more people in the Marines that are kind of dedicated to the sense of justice like Smoker and Kobe. Uh, they're not all corrupted or anything like that. Like Momonga. Momonga would be awesome. Actually, can we get Momonga to be the next damn Admiral after everything is said and done and over? It's possible, like, like Fujitora might stay, maybe Green Bull might go and do his own thing. Don't know what Aka Inu would do. I don't know if Aka Inu would stick around or not. Aka Inu might die by the end of the story. Who knows? Everything that he did, you know, he might, he's probably not going to be the new Fleet Admiral after all this is said and done. But Momonga, Momonga's badass. I love that dude. I love his mustache. I love his hairstyle. And right now, you know where Momonga's at? You know what he's doing? Momonga is the new commander of the G1 base, which is where Marineford used to be. So Momonga commands that place right now. I should honestly do a video, that's not on the list, but I should do a video about all the different marine bases all over the world in the Grand Line, like the G bases and stuff like that. But at any rate, yeah, like Momonga, people like that, people like that. And Momonga uses a sword, so he might be a member of sword, right? So I know we're kind of getting off topic here with Smoker, but that's the general point here. Um, I think we're going to get to a point where it's the end of the story, it's Laugh Tale, and Luffy and the Straw Hats are going to have to team up with some of their former enemies to fight against Blackbeard, to fight against, you know, maybe the revived Rock. Fox crew, whatever threat is on the horizon at that point, you know, we're going to have a moment where, like, oh crap, we're the Marines, but we have to team up with damn pirates in order to beat them, and some of the Marines might, some of the Marines might rather die than do that, some of the Marines might be like, I would rather die than freaking help out pirates, that's, that's Monkey D. Lupin, that is the son of Dragon the Revolutionary, the guy that's trying to overthrow the world government, and we're the Marines, and we're supposed to work with them? I'm not doing that. And then you could have a moment where Smoker steps up to plate. Smoker, like, he billows forth, and he, like, he, cre he creates a giant form. It's like, everybody, shut up! And he just, like, turns into a giant plume of smoke. And he just, like, like, like takes up the whole sky of all the Marines. And he's like, listen up! Those pirates over there, I've had many run-ins run with them. I fought with them before at Alabasta. Luffy, he's somebody that embodies what it means to be truly free in this world. I don't know, I'm making this shit up as I go. But, you know, Smoker gives an inspirational speech to the Marines. And he's like, look, not all pirates are the same. If you still believe that at this point, with the way the world is going right now, then I'm sorry, you're an idiot. That works better as an inspirational speech. You know, Smoker's like, if you still think it's just pirates bad, government good, then you're an idiot. I don't know what to tell you. So here's the deal. We're gonna work with them or we die because we can't beat the Rocks crew by ourselves. They're the evil ones, all right? They're the ones literally trying to take over the world. This kid, he, he grabs Luffy off to the side. He's like, this kid over here is like, wait, what's going on? He's like, he's just trying to find the treasure and have a damn adventure. Just let the kid do what he does. Whatever. Anyway, we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna fight. Now, who's with me, right? And then everybody maybe gets rallied by Smoker. His, his motivational speech will probably be a little bit more impactful than what I just did just now. But it's gonna be something like that. Maybe the Marines will be like, yeah, Vice Admiral Smoker, we'll follow you! And, you know, maybe Kobe will be there, Tashigi will be there, of course. And we're all, we'll all rally together, and then the and then the, the Smoker's Marines, and then Luffy's uh, pirate, you know, Grand Fleet, or whatever all that's there, they're gonna work together to fight against the Rocks crew, or the Blackbeard crew, or whatever's gonna be the threat there. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's the video today. Thanks for watching, everyone. This will be the second of the list videos. I should probably scratch these out here. So that's the Payback War from yesterday and then Smoker's video. We have ten remaining. Ooh. Barry, I hereby dub you the keeper of the list. Long may you reign. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching, signing out.